In this video, we're going to look at the next group of biomolecules, proteins. So here are our learning objectives. Number one, we want to define functional groups. I know I talked about that a little bit before, but I got a slide that I want to show you to help kind of explain that a bit more. Um, and so now, uh, from here on out, we're really looking at proteins from uh, learning objective two down to six. What are the building blocks of proteins? We'll learn that those are amino acids, and we need to describe the anatomy or the chemical makeup of an amino acid. An amino acid is a molecule. Uh, number four, how many different types of amino acids are involved in human physiology? And we'll see that there are 20. And number five, what is the difference between catabolic and anabolic reactions? We, this is not necessarily a protein-specific learning objective, but it's a good place to throw this in. And number six, describe primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures of a protein. So let's start off with the idea of functional groups. So I described to you guys um, previously that when you look at letters of the alphabet, in the English alphabet we have 26 letters, but oftentimes certain letters like to be clustered together, like ST, stick, stone, stable, statue, fast, mast, uh, BR, and you can see a whole bunch of words there that show you that functional group BR. There's probably a, a, a name for this if you're a grammar teacher or an English teacher. I don't know what those names are, but um, we all certainly recognize that letters tend to be clustered together this way. T-I-O-N. There's a gazillion words that end in T-I-O-N. Ambition, nation, congratulations. Uh, I mean, th there's, th there's a ton of them besides these. These are just examples. Well, similarly, when you look at the periodic table of elements, um, even though you know the, the big four are what we care about, well, we'll see a lot of functional groups are made up of the big four, but occasionally we'll see some other ones like this phosphorus over here. But all I'm, all I'm really trying to say is that certain atoms like to be clustered together into functional groups. And so OH is a very, very famous and very common functional group. We've seen that before in carbohydrates. I just never called it out. Um, that has a name. It's called a hydroxyl group, and you need to know that name. Um, hydroxyls are famously found in various alcohols. Uh, PO4 is called a phosphate group, so this means there's one um, atom of phosphorus and then four atoms of oxygen. And when we hook them up together, we actually call that a phosphate group. And probably the most famous example we'll see is adenosine triphosphate, ATP, which we'll spend enough time on. C double bonded to O with another OH as a carboxyl group. And we find these amino acids, which is, which is what we're gonna get into. And NH2 is an amine group. We also find these amino acids, which we'll see. So the point here is that we've got these functional groups. And what I need you to know is I just need you to know the basic ones. And, and these are the four basic ones. And, and depending on your discipline, there's other ones that people might consider to be basic ones. But for what we're doing in human biology, if you know these four, then I'm good. I'm good with that. Um, this is a table from another, um, I, I don't recall which textbook this is from, um, but it shows you here a whole bunch of common functional groups. Um, and I highlighted in red boxes the, the ones that I just showed you previously. And it gives you a little bit more information about them. Okay, so now with that in mind, okay, there's a reason we're doing functional groups. The reason we're doing functional groups is that I want to talk about, I'm going to use them actually to build amino acids. And I'll tell you right off the bat that the two that I'm going to use are, as you might imagine, the amino group or amine group and this thing called a carboxyl group. So these two groups right over here, the carboxyl and the amine groups, are really important in amino acids. So here, that would be these two. So this carboxyl group right over here, and then these amine groups, those are gonna be really important for what we're doing now, which is again why I wanted to get into uh, functional groups here. So um, proteins, the building blocks again are amino acids. So what I want you to be able to do is if I, if I asked you, hey, build an amino acid, I want you to be able to tell me how I build the amino acid. And here are your rules. Well, at the center, I have a, a carbon, and this is a central carbon atom. That term alpha, I don't care if you know it or not, but this thing, this is your central carbon. And from there, remember that carbon forms four covalent bonds. So I have a covalent bond coming up here to this thing called an R group, whatever that is. I have a covalent bond coming off to the carbon, which uh, is part of the carboxyl group. So this is your carboxyl group that I just mentioned, COOH that you also saw on this slide, COOH, okay, ignore the R for now. And so this is your carboxyl group. So carbon is bound to the carboxyl group, and it happens to be bound through this carbon. Um, the next thing carbon is bound to is a single hydrogen atom down below. And the last thing carbon is bound to is the nitrogen, which is part of your amine group. And so 
again, if I ask you, build an amino acid, here are the rules. You say central carbon with four things attached, a R group, carboxyl group, a hydrogen atom, and an amine group. So I highlighted here that these right here, these two, the amine group and the carboxyl group, these two are your uh, the functional groups that are represented here. Okay, hydrogen is just hydrogen, there's nothing else to say. The last thing then is R. What the heck is R? You know, you see the letter R here, right? What, what, what is R? Well, in chemistry, what R is, is it's just uh, what X is to people doing algebra, R is to people doing chemistry. So let me give you an example. If we looked at something like this, what is R? Okay, so in other words, let, let, let me back up here. If you were to go to the periodic table of elements, um, and I actually don't have one on this PowerPoint, but if you were to access a periodic table of elements, you're not going to find an R anywhere. You'll find an N, which is nitrogen. You'll find an O, which is oxygen. You'll find a C, which is carbon, but you're not going to find an R on there. And so what is R? It's this. So let's kind of go left to right. If I told you, if I just gave you a chemical equation and said 2x equals 10, what is x? You would say x is 5. Okay, so you'd solve for x and you say x is equal to 5. So if I say, well, what is x? You would say, oh, it's just a, it's just a stand-in variable. It, it's the unknown. It's the, it could be a bunch of different things. 4x equals 12. Well, x equals 3. And, and I guess in that regard, in this specific case, x couldn't be a bunch of different things. x is 5 here, x is 3 here. But what I mean is just the letter, the variable x in, in the big scheme of math, it could be a lot of different things. 3x equals 15. Well, in that case, x equals 5. It's a bit of a stretch, but let's just see it in grammar. May the x be with you. And for you Star Wars nerds like me, you would say, oh, that's the force. May the force be with you. X equals the force. So we use x just kind of as a stand-in variable, meaning that in math is the thing you solve for. But what I really mean is that it could represent a lot of different things. So in chemistry, R can be a lot of different things. So what this means here is hydroxyl groups sometimes are bound to, you know, two carbons which are attached to something. Sometimes it's R is a, a, a whole, like 18 carbons bound to something. Sometimes R is like five carbons bound to some handful of other things. R can be a lot of different things. All we care about is this thing. Just like you saw, well, you could say these letter clusters, you could say something like ST bound to R. In this case, R is ICK. In this case, R is ONE. In this case, R is ABLE. In this case, R is ATUTE. R can be a lot of different things when we're talking about just these letter clusters, when we're talking about these so-called functional groups. Okay. Now, in the context of amino acids, though, specifically in the context of amino acids, we have 20 different versions of R. And I, sh I wrote here in human biology, what I really should have said in amino acids, in amino acids, there are 20 different versions of R. So let's look at those different types, uh, different R's. Um, there's your slide. You don't have to memorize this list, but what I want you to see is in some cases, R is nothing but a single hydrogen atom. But, but hang on, before we do that, these, there are 20 different amino acids here on this table. And what I want you to see is that the base of them are all the same. They have a central carbon, right? They each have a central carbon. Each of them is bound to a carboxyl group. That's that COO up top, COO up top. And again, I know you might be thinking, wait, you said carboxyl is COO H. So where the heck is the H? Just, just, I want you to put that question on hold for now because it's a little bit of a distraction for right now. Just, just trust me, it's still a carboxyl group. The next thing that we see is your hydrogen atom. Um, and do we see a hydrogen atom? Yep, for each of these, there's a hydrogen atom right over here. So what I want you to see is for each of these amino acids, the, the, the fundamental skeleton, you know, in other words, the things that's not highlighted in blue for each of these, it's exactly the same, isn't it? They're all identical. The only thing that's different between these amino, uh, 20 different amino acids is the R group. So in some cases, R is nothing but single hydrogen atom. If that's the case, the name of that amino acid is glycine. In other cases, uh, the R group looks like this. It's carbon with two hydrogens bound to another carboxyl group, in which case we call that aspartate. In other cases, it's this carbon with two hydrogens and another carbon with two hydrogens, and then your carboxyl group, in which case we call you glutamate. And so what I want you to see then is that what is the difference between these 20 amino acids? The difference between these 20 amino acids is simply the R group. To say it differently, 
the R group gives the identity to that amino acid. In other words, if you were to ask anybody out there, uh, hey, what does arginine look like? Then everybody in the world agrees that arginine, you know, well, this part looks the same as every other amino acid, carbon, carboxyl, hydrogen, amine, but then the R group looks like this each and every time. That's just what arginine is. And in fact, this R group is what makes arginine arginine. If we were to change this R group to something more circular looking like this, then all of a sudden you are no longer arginine, you are now phenylalanine, okay? That's what you are right over here. And so that's what these R groups are. Obviously, I don't need you to memorize these things. I don't need you to memorize, uh, I'll, I'll never show this to you and say, what is that? A, lysine, B, arginine, C, histidine. It's a waste of your time right now to try to memorize these R groups. I just need you to understand what they are. So where are we? We are looking at an amino acid. And again, at this point, you should feel comfortable saying that, ah, every single amino acid has a central carbon, carboxyl group, hydrogen atom, amine group, and there are 20 different R groups available in you know, protein chemistry. This is uh, another, um, this is just from another book showing you, this is your generalized structure of all amino acids. There's my central carbon my carboxyl group. Notice it says acid group here, but I'm calling it a carboxyl group. This is your amine group. There's your hydrogen atom, and then you have your R. If it's an H, if R equals H, then it's glycine. If uh, R equals all this stuff, then it's aspartic acid. If R equals all this stuff, it's lysine, um, so on and so forth. And again, this slide is only listing four famous amino acids. Um, there's the rest of them if you, if you care to look at that. Okay, um, so I think what I want to do is let me let me wrap this up here because I don't want this video to run too long and there's a lot more we need to do. So what we've covered is we've covered these um, three learning objectives. We've defined functional groups. We talked about the building blocks of a protein, simply saying that they're amino acids, and we highlighted or, uh, or laid out the anatomy of amino acid. We're going to end it right there, and I'll pick up with another video on uh, for the rest of proteins.